All right, so last time we talked a tiny, tiny little bit about layout. And again, this is not a topic that we're gonna delve into in a, in, in a really deep way. I've given you the layout you need for the next component of the MP. In the future, if we do any layout together, we'll do it very slowly and carefully and we'll walk through it step by step because this is like a whole nother thing that's just a part of app development, but not really something that we have time or you know energy to cover in this course. Um, however, one of the things we do need to do next is to understand a little bit about how to use the information in this layout in order to uh, make some progress on our main activity. So at this point, uh, we have a search method that we've written that works. You should have done that in the first part of, or the middle part of the MP2 checkpoint, sorry, MP1. Um, and so now what we want to do is we actually want to use it to uh, cause the search bar in the UI to do something useful. Right now it doesn't do anything. Um, so for example, if I write test, nothing happens. Um, and so the first thing that we need to think about is how are, what, 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 who needs to know about this, right? When the search bar changes right now, we have no way of responding to that change. And this is where one of the places in UI programming, where we get to use this cool design pattern that's called a callback. A lot of times when we think about our code or the way we've thought about our code in the past, our code does stuff because it runs a loop and a certain number of things happen or whatever. With a UI callback, the problem we have to solve is that the user does things and then our app needs to respond to them. So we can't like run the code to, you know, um, to do the search without the input that the user provides. And so we need some way of finding out when the user makes changes to this text bar. That's the search bar. That's the thing that we're going to talk about how to do next. And that's the critical thing. And it links the main activity with this layout. So the layout puts the search bar on the screen, but right now the main activity isn't integrated with it. And so the main activity has no way to find out that the search bar has changed. And so what we want to accomplish is when the search bar changes, we want to run code on our main activity that will then allow us to do things like update the list of places that is shown. Okay, so the first step is to establish this linkage. Now we've already done this once before, we've done it right here. Here we had this variable map view that we established on our main activity class, and then we initialized it in our onCreate method. So I'm gonna follow a similar pattern. Now, in this case, I'm gonna create this as a val because it doesn't need to be a property on the main activity class. I'm only gonna use it right here. I'm gonna call this search view, and that's gonna be find view by id um, r.id.search, um, and let's see. Oh, and I, I need to provide a type, right? And this is one of these cases, you know, Colin is normally very good about inferring types. This is one of these cases where it doesn't work. So, I'm, and so, and this is actually, now if you do this, be very careful because we need to make sure we're getting the right search view. Uh, there are several different Android libraries for UI. And in this case, we're using the Android X AppCompat.widget.search view. You might wonder what's the difference. The difference is that the AppCompat stuff allows us to build applications that are compatible with older versions of Android. So we want to use the Android X AppCompat widget. And now you'll see that this, that error goes away. And now I have a handle, a reference to that search view component that is present in my layout. Now, in order for this to work, this has to match. I have to use the ID here. If I change this ID, the main activity will crash because it won't be able to find, uh, actually, I don't think it'll compile uh, because it won't be able to find that component. Okay, so now I have a reference to this search view. What can I do with it? And it turns out if I, if I click search view and I uh, hit dot, um, you'll notice, and I'll say set on, you'll see that there's actually a bunch of methods that allow me to register what's called a callback or a listener that allows me to be notified when certain things happen. So when the search bar is closed, that X over there on the right, if the user clicks that, there's a way to be notified. If the search bar is, um, if the, if the focus leaves the search bar, so if the person is typing and they click back on the map, there's a callback or a listener that I can register for that. In this case, what I care about, uh, or the one I want to use is this, it's called set on query text listener. And this allows me to be notified whenever the text in the search bar changes. Now, what do I pass to this? This is interesting. This is going to bring together like a 
lot of our knowledge about uh, Kotlin and about this, uh, you know, you might be wondering, like, why did we talk about anonymous objects? Why did we talk about lambdas? This is why. Why did we talk about interfaces? So if I click on this, what I need to pass to this is something that implements the on query text listener interface. This is an interface. Um, so I need to pass something that implements this interface. Now I could pass an anonymous object. This interface is not functional. It has two methods, so I can't use a Lambda. Um, I could pass an anonymous object, but in this case, I'm going to simply pass this. Now what's this? This is a reference to main activity dot, the, the main activity class. Now you'll notice that there's an error right now, and the error is because this does not implement the correct interface. But it turns out that I can implement that interface. I'm just gonna add it up here. I'm gonna say search view dot on query text listener. Okay, so now there is a different problem, and if I go up here and I click you know, uh, F2 to find the problems, it's gonna say it's it does not implement the members from that interface. So remember, when I choose to implement an interface, I'm entering into a contract with another part of the code to do something, right? So to implement this interface, I have methods that I have to implement. And the cool thing about Android Studio is I can just click implement members. I'm gonna choose both of them. I'm gonna hit return, and it'll put in these stubs for me, which is kind of nice. So essentially, um, it'll add these on query text submit, on query text change, um, these are methods that take a string and return a boolean. I think I can make can I make the string non null? I think I can. Uh, yeah, um, that string I don't think will be null, but by making it non nullable, it's kind of nice. I can work with it as a non null string, and it puts in this to do comment. Right, basically says uh, we haven't done this yet. So you might be wondering, like, what have we accomplished here? Well, remember, our goal was to be notified when the text in that box changed, and I assert that by adding these methods, we are now going to be notified. Now, how do we figure that out? Okay, well, I'm gonna take out these to-dos, and what I'll do is I'll say log.d, I'll use this tag, I'll say on query text submit, and then I'll put the, that, that query string in there. And this is using Kotlin's beautiful, um, and then I'll just return, I think I just returned false. Uh, we'll talk about what that return value means in a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna put this over here because these are two different methods and you also might be wondering like, what's different about them? Um, and it's a, it's a valid question and we're gonna use the logging to explore. So I'm gonna have this be on query text change and I'm gonna call these both text. Did the same thing to me in Java, it's kind of annoying. Um, all right, cool. Okay, so let's run our app again. I'm gonna open up the log uh, tab so that we can see what's happening. We're going to use our main activity tag. So far, nothing is shown, but now let's go up here, click on the search, and hit test. Ooh, look at that! So what's happening? Every time I make a change to so so again, what did I do here? I found the ID of the component, and essentially, I told Android I want to be notified. The main activity class wants to be notified when there are changes to the text shown in the search view. Um, and the way I do this is I implement this interface that allows it to call back. So when there's a change, Android knows about the changes. The way it tells me is it calls this method and it passes me some useful information. In this case, it passes me the text that's in the bar. So I at this point have, uh, you see, I see on query text change, on query text change, on query text change. You might be wondering, when does on query text submit get called? If I go back over here and hit return, you'll see that it's called. And that's actually a bug in the current Android emulator, I think. It should only be called once, but it's called twice. Um, anyway, when the text is submitted, like when the user hits return, that method is called. Um, okay, now, how are we gonna enable our search? So now we're actually getting really close. We have the search method that takes a list of places and a search string. Now we have connected our search bar with the main activity. So now we know when the search bar has changed. Now we're going to enable kind of a modern app experience, meaning that we are not going to worry about whether or not the user hit enter. Like who cares? And it's very 1990s. You know, when you search, the map should just automatically update. So I'm going to actually move this down here on query text submit because I'm really not going to do much here. Now, what's the return value for these? So essentially, uh, if you look up the documentation, if you just hover over this, what you'll see is that the return value um, indicates whether or not this component handled the event. 
So if we handle the change and Android shouldn't do like the default thing, we return true. If we didn't handle the change, we return false. So in onQuery text submit, we're going to return false because we're not doing anything with the information. In onQuery, sorry, onQuery text submit, in onQuery text change, we're going to return true because uh, Android shouldn't do whatever the default is because we're updating the map. That's what's supposed to happen in our app when you search. Now we're very close, and I'll essentially sort of outline what we need to do at this point. So we have the text to search for. Uh, we have a list of the, all the places that we saved when we loaded up the app, and you can find that by looking around in this file. And so we're going to do the following. We're going to search using our search method on the list of places. If the search result is a subset of the list of places, we're going to update the places that are shown in the UI to that subset. So if you search for pizza and there's four places that have pizza in the description, we'll show those four places. If the search term doesn't match anything, we'll show all the places. Now, eh, you can argue, okay, maybe I shouldn't do that or whatever I should. Uh, but for this type of whole text search, I would argue maybe it's the right thing. But, you know, you, you could change it at some other point later. But for now, to pass the test suites, that's what should happen. Take the text that's passed to this method, run a search. That will give you back a list of places. If that list of places is empty, then just continue, why well, shouldn't say continue, show all the places. Show every place that you know about. If that list of places is not empty, then show a subset, show that list of places in the UI, call the appropriate function to update the UI um, appropriately. This is not a lot of code left to write at this point. Um, but you know, I know that we're on unfamiliar ground, and so we're going slowly and we're talking through things carefully. One of the things I do want to sort of pop up the stack a little bit and talk about is this idea of callbacks, because this is a really interesting programming pattern. It's not something that we see all the time, but it is something that we're going to, that it's not something you see up till now. I shouldn't say it's not something you see all the time, because it is something you see all the time, but it's used in UI programming, it's used in network programming, it's used in some applications that we haven't really talked too much about yet. So we will see this pattern again later when we talk about about networking in MP2. Um, but the idea is that sometimes, for whatever reason, I can't like write the code to enter, like there's no way to enter this method from the main activity. I have to have Android notify me when this happens. So we go through this process. We find the thing, we figure out what interface we need to use, we implement that interface, and now, what the cool thing is that Android's doing a lot of the work, right? We didn't have to create the text widget, Android is animating that for us, but it's allowing us to do the cool stuff, which is to update the list of places appropriately. All right, so you're very close to being done with MP1. Uh, good luck wrapping up. Uh, if you need help, you know where to find us.